Hello, Commonwealth Sport Canada community. My name is Erin England, and I'm the social media lead behind the Commonwealth Sport Canada accounts. You are tuning into Champ Chats, the series where we dive a little bit deeper into the lives of athletes and alumni of the Commonwealth Games. Today, I'm joined by an athlete who is no stranger to international competition. He is a field hockey athlete who appeared in three Olympics, two World Cups, and four, that's right, I said four, Commonwealth Games. He has a grand total of 284 international competition appearances. Please welcome to Champ Chats, Mark Pearson. Mark, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Erin. Nice to see you. Yep, it's so nice to have you. And I always like to start off these interviews by asking my guests, about their Olympic experiences. So as you moved from the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games to the 2016 Summer Games in Rio, and then finally the Tokyo Games that just happened, can you pick out maybe one thing you learned from each of these experiences? Yeah, good question, Aaron. And honestly, as I reflect back on my career, it was sort of three, you know, the people think the Olympics might be the same each time, but it was honestly, you know, three completely different experiences for me. I was super young, the youngest member of the team in 2008. And again, we had a great group of, of older guys and again, a, a lot of players that I looked up to. And again, it was my first sort of taste of, um, yeah, of the Olympic experience. And I walked in, you know, pretty wide eyed and, and pretty young and a little bit immature as I reflect back. And, you know, I was, frankly, I was, I was pretty nervous. I was kind of, I put myself in a box and I remember the older guys saying at the time and our coaches saying at the time, you know, don't get distracted, don't get distracted. And, um, you know, that's, there I was being like, all right, I'm not going to get distracted. And, and it was pretty amazing. Like the Olympic village is this incredible collection of, of human beings, the, the fastest of the fast, the, the biggest of the big and the smallest of the small. It's just, you know, you, you, there's, there's no more unique collection of, of human people because, you know, they have all the seven footers that play volleyball and basketball. And, you know, Yao Ming was at the peak of his prime at that time. And there's the seven foot six Chinese basketball player at home in Beijing. And he literally had hundreds, if not, you know, thousands of volunteers following him around and obviously Roger Federer and just seeing all these sort of premier star athletes for the first time. And, you know, the dream team, Kobe at the time, LeBron was there. It was it was a little bit overwhelming and hard not to get distracted. But, you know, I think what I learned as I grew older was that for me as an individual, um, I'm the type of person that that needs to, to, snop, to stop and smell the roses a little bit sometimes. And again, for me to try and put myself into a box and not to, to speak with other athletes or to engage with people or to, you know, to talk to those from different cultures, it, it didn't really suit my personality. And I think as I reflect back, it was you know, it was an amazing experience. Um, you know, again, playing at the Olympics is amazing, is, is a huge privilege. And I loved throwing that shirt on. But I, I think as I learned, as I look back, I learned more about myself probably at those games than anything else. And then, you know, moving beyond 2008, here I am as this, you know, again, a, a young uh, aspiring field hockey player thinking this is amazing. I'm going to get to go there in four years in London and I have English family and they're going to be able to come watch. And I didn't really realize the struggle of how much goes into qualification. And for a men's Canadian field hockey player, I mean, let's face it, we, we punch above our weight. We do really well considering the resources and our players we have in Canada, but, but qualification for us is never assured. And sadly, we missed out on qualification for, for London. And again, I was, you know, for the first time in my life experienced like just this just deep disappointment. And again, realized that, again, it does take so much as an athlete. You got to dedicate yourself. You got to do put the time in. You got to do the research. You got to, you know, study the game tape. You got to refine your skills to actually play well on the day to qualify for the Olympics. And so, again, that Rio experience was for me so much about the journey uh, because, you know, coming off the back of the London disappointment, we had a number of athletes retire. So players like myself and Scott Tupper, Dave Carter, Anthony Kindler, like this next cohort of guys had to kind of step up um, and sort of rebuild the team and try to get back to, you know, where we were unable to get to in London. So Rio was amazing just from sort of that journey of, of getting back there. And, you know, again, feeling like we'd accomplished something with this new cohort of athletes. And then, um, the Tokyo experience for me was obviously, you know, the COVID experience, no fans, um, you know, no family members there. Uh, it was, it was tough as a player. I'm happy I've had those previous experiences where I was able to share the moment. 
uh, with my friends and family. And then also coming off the back of an Achilles tendon tear in 2019, it was sort of a long road physically back of, you know, surgery, rehab, more rehab and even more rehab to get myself back to where I needed to get to. So, yeah, I, get, I mean, I went in three different, totally different directions, but honestly, as I reflect back, um, amazing opportunity to play for Canada. So happy that I had the opportunity to, to play in Olympic games three times, but like, you know, three different, three completely different experiences for me, just sort of mentally. When you were talking about the London Olympics, you mentioned that you have some family ties in England. You had a cousin that played for the Great Britain Olympic field hockey team in Tokyo, and you two actually faced off on the field. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to play against a family member at the Olympic Games? Yeah, that was honestly, Aaron, something so special. And I mean, I've been following his career. He's about 11 years younger than me now, and he's a second cousin, but I would say a close second cousin. We got a close family in England, and every time I would go back, you know, I would see him and his dad and his sister. And again, my grandfather, my late grandfather, his sister, who was probably his favorite family member, it was her, you know, grandson. So again, a really close second cousin to me. And again, he was initially a cricketer and then moved to field hockey. I hope it was a little bit because of me, because I knew we used to, you know, play a little bit when I went back there. But um, honestly, he's just a great kid. And again, we played England a few times, 2017, 2018, and he was just outside the team. Uh, he ended up making the team kind of whilst I was recovering from my surgery and, and I had my rehab. So again, I was hopeful that we would have this opportunity to face off against each other. And um, again, I got myself healthy. He made the Great Britain team, which is even harder than making the England team. So he did amazingly well. And then, yeah, we had this uh, big game that was actually the same day as my aunt's birthday. And I know all of my English family, again, they'd always had Canadian shirts on because they were cheering for me. Suddenly they're torn between which jersey to put on. Are they a GB fan? Are they a Canada fan? So, um, yeah, there was a big contingent uh, at my grandfather's house watching the game. And, yeah, just a really special moment for, for the Canadian contingent and the England contingent. And sadly, they did get bragging rights in the game. But uh, it was just, yeah, just amazing. And, you know, again, it's, uh, I just feel really fortunate that I was able to have that experience. That sounds like a really special aspect to the Tokyo Games. And now you didn't just compete at the Olympics, you also got involved off the field. You spent three terms on the Athletes Commission for the Canadian Olympic Committee alongside a lot of other talented Team Canada members. I'm wondering if you could switch daily routines with a Team Canada athlete from a different sport, which athlete would you pick and why? Uh, probably Anaki Gomez. He was a fellow Athlete Commission member. He's the vice chair, he's a race walker. Uh, I love going for walks. I, I go for walks every day after dinner. Uh, I probably couldn't walk as fast as them, but I know they just go for long walks every day. So maybe I'd trade daily routines with them. That's a good answer. And walking was definitely a crowd favorite during the pandemic. Um, when I talk to athletes like yourself that had such long careers, it's always very evident that there's a lot of ups and downs that happen when you're training for big international tournaments. When it comes to your career, what was the biggest challenge that you faced and how did you overcome it? Yeah, uh, again, good question. And every athlete has their struggles, you know, whether it's emotionally, physically, um, financially. I think the biggest for me as I reflect back was, yeah, the two serious injuries that I had. It was kind of bookending my career. So off the back of my 2006 Commonwealth Games, which was like my first taste of, you know, a big international competition, I actually uh, broke my hand. It was a really bad break, it required two surgeries, seven months of rehab, which is super unusual for anyone that's, you know, broken bones. Um, but again, it, it was it was tough. It was weird. It was I just cracked into the team and suddenly here I am sitting on the sideline rehabbing my pinky finger. Um, and yeah, it, it was just it was really tough. And again, you you have to stay dedicated. You have to take it one day at a time. You have to try and make those incremental gains because you can't rehab. You know, you can't get back to 100 percent overnight. It, it does take time. And so I think, you know, I was young. I really wanted to get back out there, but I was doing all the things you know, I could still run, I could still stay fit to kind of get myself where I needed to get to, to make sure that when my hand was recovered, I was able to get back and, and onto the team. So yeah, that was in 2007. And then obviously I already mentioned my Achilles tendon tear in 2019, which is again, a super tough injury, especially as sort of an aging athlete as I was 33 at the time. Um, you know, again, I was never as, well, I was fairly fast when I was younger, but I probably wasn't the fastest player on the field when I was 33. So um, yeah, it was, Again, I just wasn't sure how I was going to recover if I was going to be the same player. I was playing well at the time. And again, you just don't know how you 
are going to get back. And luckily I had a great surgeon that, that did an amazing job and a, a good medical team around me to kind of get me back. And obviously I mentioned the, the rehab that I did to get there. So yeah, as I reflect back, it was probably just, you know, the mental toll, the physical toll of, of really spending, you know, almost two years of a, let's, I don't even know the 15 year career, 14 year career, um, almost two years of that, just essentially doing rehab. So, uh, which, which is never easy. You brought up the Commonwealth Games in your answer. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about your Commonwealth Games experiences. Do you remember that moment when you found out you were going to Melbourne for the 2006 Commonwealth Games? And what was that moment like? And did you have any expectations for what it would be like to compete at a Commonwealth Games? Uh, I was, I know exactly where I was. I was halfway up the chairlift uh, at Whistler, British Columbia. So I had got caps previously the prior year for the first time as a youngster. So Scotland had come to Canada to play uh, against us. And I was, again, a youngster. And so we had a couple of different sort of teams that were put out there to play the Scotland team. I got my first taste of international action uh, in Vancouver, where I grew up. And then, you know, I was around the team, you know, thought I had a chance at making that Commonwealth Games team, ultimately didn't make it. The team went to New Zealand en route to Melbourne to play two test matches against New Zealand. And one of the forwards, who's actually now our provincial sport minister, Ravi Klon, he actually injured his hamstring in that game. And so, again, I went up to Whistler because I didn't make the team and I wanted to ski. And then halfway up the chairlift, I get this call from this random number. And it was our coach, Gene Muller, phoning me from New Zealand. Uh, and I'm picking it up and trying to take the call. And he says, can you come down to, to Melbourne for the Commonwealth Games? And I was just, you know, shocked, excited, amazed. And I don't think I've ever skied as slowly down a, a mountain in my life because, you know, I obviously didn't want to injure myself. And, you know, I drove back down to Vancouver later that day uh, and then got on a plane the next day to, to head to Melbourne. And I remember, again, you know, as a team sport athlete, you're used to kind of following the team around and, um, you know, again, where's the manager? Okay, let's follow the manager and going through, but I had to travel by myself. Again, I was super young, arrive in Melbourne, go through the accreditation process without really knowing what to do. And I remember, you know, being a little bit overwhelmed, obviously I didn't get lost, but um, it was kind of my first taste of, of something much bigger than than uh, you know my local field hockey tournaments I was used to. So yeah, it was it was an interesting experience, but one that I look really fondly back on. And again, it was, you know, Melbourne, they hosted an amazing Commonwealth Games. That's such a great story. Um, Melbourne wasn't your only Commonwealth Games experience that took place in Australia, though. You also competed at the 2018 Gold Coast Commonwealth Games, and it must have been a big full circle moment to return to Australia 12 years after your Commonwealth debut. Given your additional experience, did you approach the Gold Coast Games any differently um, leading up to those games? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as an athlete, so much of your preparation is around kind of your role in the team. And obviously, I, I mentioned I was a bit of an outsider to that 2006 team, and I was, you know, 18 or 19 at the time, and it flew down separately, you know, about a week after the guys had already been down there. You know, it was obviously before the tournament started, but, you know, again, I was there as a role player. It was come on for a couple of minutes, run around, cause some havoc, um, and then and then sub off. And, you know, every Canadian field hockey player knows that feeling. The first 50 games are kind of there to just support the rest of the team. And then, you know, by the by 2018, I was, you know, a fixture in the team and, you know, leading from the middle of the park and, and trying to dictate play and, you know, really be that difference maker to help us get the performances and the results we needed to be successful. So, um, you know, from that... That perspective, um, just totally different. Obviously, I've matured as an individual since that 2006 experience. But again, I, I love hockey's a big sport in Australia. The weather's always great. They really support the Commonwealth Games. The crowds are good. Uh, and then from a competition perspective, obviously different sports, the level of competition is different. In our sport, the Commonwealth Games, the competition is super high. Like great teams are there. You know, England, Scotland, Australia, India, Pakistan. Like these are some of you know, they're all in the top 10 in the world. Um, and it is a huge competition for us. So again, I obviously, I love the Commonwealth Games. I think it's an amazing tournament. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just great. And I think Australia has always been an amazing host. And um, yeah, I've loved every minute of, of competing in, in Australia. Between your Commonwealth Games experiences in Melbourne, Delhi, Glasgow, and Gold Coast, if you had the chance to go back and compete in one of these cities one last time, which one would you pick and why? 
Uh, probably Melbourne, to be honest. It's, it's a beautiful city. Uh, we have a former teammate there that I played uh, at the Rio Olympics with Matthew Guest. He moved back to, to Australia after spending a few years in Canada and playing with us. He's one of my best friends. Um, and again, I, as I mentioned already, Australia is yeah, an amazing host of the Commonwealth Games. They love hockey. They always have good crowds, good weather. It's, it's just a fun place to play. So um, if I could combine that with, with going down to see my buddy, um, I think it would be you know, a great experience. So um, yeah, I'd love to go back to Melbourne. That'd be a win-win. And exactly. finally, <laughs> this is a question I like to ask a lot of my guests. If you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice as a young athlete, what would that be? Great question. Um, yeah, for me, it, if I could go back in time, it would probably be to stretch more. Um, I, as I grew older in my career, I realized how like unflexible I was. And obviously we play a sport with a short stick and we're bent over. And again, you know, I, as I got older in my career, the amount of work I needed to do, um, to recover from training sessions, to recover from games only increased exponentially. And again, yoga became a big part of my routine and doing just long held yoga poses and bringing a yoga mat on tour with me of where we went just to try and keep myself in, you know, in decent shape and staying flexible and ensuring that I did not get injured. But uh, I would have started that routine probably a lot earlier in life. Um, it's just that I'm, cause I'm by no means flexible. It was just what I needed to do to stay, to stay on the field. So yeah, I probably would have started that at 23 as opposed to 32. That's a great piece of advice for a long career. Um, we're going to wrap up this interview with a fun segment of this or that. I'm going to give you two options. Some of them are field hockey related. Some of them are just for fun. And you're going to tell me which one you prefer. Ready? Sounds good. Okay. Starting with take the game winning shot or give the assist to a teammate. I definitely take the shot. <laughs> okay. Play in really hot weather or in the rain. Uh, I probably want to say hot because I like it more, but I know as a Vancouver boy, probably a lot of countries, you know, prefer, probably hate the rain a lot more than we do. So in terms of performance, probably I'll say the rain. Okay. Uh, board games or video games? Uh, board games. And would you rather play with your best friend on a team or beat your biggest rival? Uh, play with my best friend. I got, I got the opportunity to do that for 15 years. So it was pretty special. That's really cool. Um, and lastly, would you rather be able to see into the future or change the past? I'd change the past and start stretching. <laughs> okay, implementing that advice. <laughs> Great. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time today and for sitting down and chatting with us. I'm going to make sure to tag all your social media so everyone knows where to find you. Thank you to everybody watching. Tune in next time for a new conversation with another champ.